Hello all, welcome back to iPhotography course on YouTube. Now today we're going to have a look at a bit of fractal photography and that's where we're going to take a little object such as this and it helps us transform a photograph like this into something like this. Are you intrigued? I bet you are. So this is going to be one of the most budget-friendly hacks that we've given you so far. You can play with a camera, you can play with a smartphone, it really makes no difference. If you want to just add a few abstract vibes to your photographs, then this is the video to watch. So once you've got your camera, all you're going to need is your fractal prop. And you wouldn't be surprised if you've actually got one lying at home already. So to help you find the right prop, you need to know what a fractal is. Now, the dictionary definition of a fractal is a geometrical shape where each part has characteristics of the whole object. Just like snowflakes, they have reoccurring patterns at different scales. So if it sounds a little bit complex, don't worry. We've got a list of three different types of fractals that are really, really cheap to buy, and they're gonna be so useful to try out with this project. So here they are. First up, we've got prisms. They are the easiest shape to work with. Cheap to buy online, but make sure you get the clear glass ones and not the plastic versions. Second up, we've got crystal balls. Now don't plumb for the smooth ones, but the ones with the triangular patterns all over them. This will really help with the distorted effect. And number three, how about some kaleidoscopic lenses? You'll struggle to use a classic kaleidoscope as it's not transparent enough, but you can get fractal lenses from a pair of kids' kaleidoscope sunglasses and just pop the lenses out. You'll even find that some decorative sun catches have lots of little fractal glasses dangling from them, which are really good to use. But you could just simply use a nice little crystal glass. Obviously, just be careful when you do. Either way, whatever you use to create this effect, no two images are gonna be the same. And to kind of prove that point, what we've done is got three of our favorite different types of fractals. We've got prism, crystal balls, and those kaleidoscope glasses that we mentioned. And we're gonna take them out into the field and give them a bit of a spin. So we've come outside now just to try out some of the fractals we were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, first up we wanted to use the prism fractal. So you can get these in loads of different places. Online is probably going to be your best bet. The one thing to watch out for is to make sure you get a solid glass um, prism as opposed to some of the plastic ones you may find online. Um, now with the camera there's no specific setup that you really need. Um, you can try this on a tripod, you can do it handheld if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous. Um, but we've got kind of a nice little setup here with a few puddles on the floor. So I'm actually gonna take the camera off the tripod and we'll get down and we'll try something a little bit quirky. So all I've done is say, just dismounted the camera off the tripod, got really, really low down. I've just flipped the screen out on the back of the camera as well, just to help me uh, kind of get my composition a little bit more uh, straight on. Just with holding the prism, this is why it's really good to get the longer ones because it gives you that little bit more um, kind of placement that your, your fingers won't get in the shot and the end of it. So all you need to do is kind of get quite low down if you want to try something with a little bit more of a, uh, and a kind of an acute angle. And it's just a case of holding the actual prism in front of the camera. It doesn't have to go straight in front of it. You can have it to the side, you can have it angled. That's up to you to play with. I also want to try a little bit um, of some floral photography with the prism as well. Um, I think it could be quite interesting to see how it translates with close-up shots after doing some of those images of the puddle. So same again, I'm just going to hold it slightly kind of more at an angle this time. And just focus, the focus point should always remain on your actual subject. Never try to kind of focus on the prism itself because it takes away the distorted effect. So. Even if you focus first, 
and then actually bring in the prism. So the thing that I'm finding kind of primarily with the prism is that it splits the shot obviously down the middle um, or across the center of the photograph. I'm wondering if some of the other fractals we've got may give us a slightly more kind of trippier perspective. But they've actually come out really nicely. So I think what we'll do, we'll change for a little while and we'll switch over to one of our other, other fractals. So the next fractal I wanted to try was the uh, crystal ball. It's a slightly quirky kind of little construction. You see the way it's got a pointed tip, but a kind of a flat bottom there. So I've just been kind of experimenting with it already just to kind of see what kind of perspectives I get. And already it's, it's quite different each way you look at it. So we're just gonna try a nice big wide landscape shot. And there's actually a tree kind of directly in front of me behind you. Um, that I wanted to kind of capture in the center and just try and see what effect it creates behind. Just with all these different um, angled surfaces, obviously light's gonna come in differently through each one. So we'll give it a try and see how it works. So at the same time, I'm gonna just keep the, the ball right up in front of the lens. So it's completely flat to the lens this time as opposed to being kind of off center. Brilliant, that's really, really, really quirky actually. It's, it's more like a kaleidoscope than I thought it would be, actually. So I'm already getting some really, really quirky shots. It's almost like a kaleidoscope, the way that I get multiple versions of the tree around, and that's just using the flat base. So I'm gonna try again, something similar, but using all the different angled triangles. Cool. So what I'm starting to find is that shooting through all the triangles on the side, it gives it, um, it works more in lines as opposed to obviously the bottom with it being circular. It gives us that kind of kaleidoscopic effect in a circular pattern. Using the triangles on the side, everything's a little bit more linear as you can see from some of the shots. So as I say, there's some really good benefits to this. There's some parts of it I don't think personally work as well. They're a little bit harder to see in terms of the finished result. Um, but handling, that's another kind of thing just to bring up quickly. This is a fairly decent size ball. I think it's the 80 millimeter um, that we went for. You can get smaller ones, again, you can get larger ones. So I just recommend that's a decent size to go with. I think it fits comfortably in the hand. Uh, anything smaller, you may end up getting more of your fingers into the shot, depending on the size of your lens. So yeah, if you kind of maybe stick with that, maybe go a little bit larger if you want, it just means your hands aren't gonna get in the shot. But what we'll do, we'll put this to a side and we'll try our last fractal. So what we decided to do now um, for our little third fractal is just pop out one of the lenses from the kaleidoscope glasses that I uh, showed you a bit earlier. So we've just taken them out. If you can't take them out of a pair that you've got, then there's no harm with actually just using the glasses anyway and just holding them over the front of the lens. Now, I've got Becky in with us as well, so we just try a little bit of a portrait shot, and I'm just gonna hold the, the lens itself right in front of the lens of the camera and try and see what kind of effects it creates. So you can see that it's gonna darken the screen quite a bit because of the purple coating that's on the front of the lens itself. So you may need to overexpose your original shot. I've uh, slowed the shutter speed down. Now normally with uh, working with fractals like this, it doesn't really matter too much about the settings that you use. It's just about the effect. But hopefully you can see that coming through on the screen at the back here. So all I've noticed is that Given the position of the fractal, obviously it's bending light and pushing light into the, the actual camera in different directions. So I've just noticed there's a couple of little leaves that I can actually see just to the side of me behind me. I wanna try and see if we can actually get a shot where the light's coming in from behind through into the lens at the front. So even though the actual camera's facing in one direction, I'm, pho I'm, I'm photographing Rebecca here, it's actually just behind me. So just bear with me, this may not be as easy as I initially think. It's given us some really nice portraits. It's actually quite kind of quirky to think, odd to think that though Becky's not stood behind the camera in effect, I'm still able to take photographs of her. But this has actually proven quite, quite easy to work with. Quite easy to twist around in the hand. So I think it's probably a little bit easier, certainly than the ball, but then the prism as well. So 
So there we have it. We've tried out three different fractals from the prism, the crystal ball, and the kaleidoscope lens. What we'll actually do is take some of the shots that we've uh, taken this afternoon and actually put them up on social media so you can have a look yourselves and you know let us know which your favorites are. Obviously, if you've tried out a similar project yourself, if you found different fractals to use, please let us know. We're all over Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, so you can tag us in pictures there. Obviously, there's the descriptions and the comments all down below. We've got all the relevant links, the courses and our blogs. Obviously drop us a little bit of a line. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button. It would be fantastic to hear from you. We've had so many new followers over the past couple of weeks. It's really, really nice to meet some of you. You've been so kind in leaving your messages. So continue doing so and it just helps iPhotography create better content in the next video. So until you then, we'll see you soon.